Hello, everyone, and welcome to Calculus. Today, we're going to be studying indeterminate forms of limits and L'Hopital's rule. You might have thought limits was from the beginning of the year and that you weren't going to see them again. Um, but we couldn't study this particular concept in limits back in September because we did not know how to do derivatives yet. So this is an interesting concept that you can add to your little bag of tricks for how to figure out a limit. So you may remember the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x. Remember with limits, your first goal is always to plug it in. So you put in the 0 for sine, you get 0. x is 0, 0 over 0. Our next thought was that we could simplify it algebraically, which you cannot. Our next step was to make a table or a graph. So that's how we ended up doing this one. We looked at the graph, and graphically, it looked like it went to 1. And on the table, it definitely approached 1 from both directions. So that's how we decided the answer. Now we're going to use um, L'Hopital's rule in order to do this problem. He came up with this concept that if you take the derivative of the top, so I'm going to redo the limit, but I'm going to take the derivative of the top, which is cosine of x, and I'm going to take the derivative of the bottom, and now I'm going to go back to my step process, which starts with substituting in. Cosine of 0 is 1, and 1, there's nothing to substitute in, and you get 1. Another way to get the answer. Here's the main problem with L'Hopital's rule. You cannot use the quotient rule, and this is tricky for people because... I, I see people all the time accidentally try to do this derivative by doing the top and the bottom separately, and then you have to have the quotient rule. But this is going to be the exception. L'Hopital's rule actually works by taking the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. So you don't use the quotient rule. Let's do an example of that. So I go to do this limit, and I get 3 times 0 minus sine of 0 over 0, which is 0 minus 0 over 0, 0 over 0. All right, this is really super important. You can only use L'Hopital's rule if you get... 0 over 0, or infinity over infinity. That's considered an indeterminate form also. So real quick to AP, if you don't show this step, they will not give you credit. You must physically show that you're going to use L'Hopital's rule because you got 0 over 0. So you can say, therefore, the three little symbol means, therefore, um, L'Hopital's rule applies. L'Hopital's rule applies. So make sure that your notation is good. We're going to write the limit as x goes to 0. But now I'm going to take the derivative of the top, which is 3 minus cosine of x, over the derivative of the bottom, which is 1. Now when I plug in a 0, I don't need to rewrite the limit because I actually am plugging in the 0. Cosine of 0 over 1 is equal to 3 minus 1 over 1, which is 2, which is the answer. If you would like to do these next three on your own, you can, but I'm going to do them out. So when I plug a 0 over 0 in, I get 1, square root of 1 minus 1 over 0, which is 0 over 0. So this is what I need to show that L'Hopital's rule applies because I got 0 over 0. So now I'm going to do the limit still as x approaches 0, but I'm going to take the derivative of the top, which is 1 half, 1 plus x to the negative 1 half. The derivative of negative 1 is 0, and the derivative on the bottom is just 1. Now I plug in a 0, and I get 1 plus 0 to the negative 1 half which if you want, you can move that square root to the bottom and you get one half. Hopefully you like this, it's pretty straightforward and easy. On this next one, remember your first step with all limits is always substitution, three times zero 
minus sine of zero over zero cubed is zero over zero. Therefore, I can use L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule applies. So now I'm gonna do the limit as x goes to zero of the derivative of three x is three, the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, and the derivative of x cubed is three x squared. That gives me, I don't need to rewrite the limit because I'm actually plugging in the zero, three minus cosine of zero over three times zero squared is cosine of zero is one. So three minus one is two over zero. Okay, so now we're in the same situation that we often found ourselves back when we were doing limits. We cannot divide by zero, but we've already used L'Hopital's rule not that you can't use it more than once, but you can only use it more than once if you get zero over zero. I got two over zero. So now you have to ask yourself, what are the other methods? I can't simplify this algebraically, so I'm going to have to go to my graph or my table. So let's graph it. So sometimes on these videos, I try to have the graph already entered for you to save you a minute. But in this case, I didn't because I really wanted to show you how I would graph it. I would use this alpha F1 so that I could make that fraction. That way you can make sure that you have the exact right thing on top there. Minus sine of x, close your parentheses, go down over x cubed. I go to graph. Now I had something really weird on my last class, so don't, remember, don't forget that you can just hit zoom six. There you go. So I can definitively see that as x approaches zero from the left and as x approaches zero from the right, that it's going to infinity. As long as this, the limit is the same from both directions, then you have your answer. On number four, our first step with all limits is always to substitute in. So one minus cosine of zero over zero plus zero squared is one minus one over zero or zero over zero. So L'Hopital's rule does apply. So I can go ahead and take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. I'm not going to use quotient rule. The derivative of one is zero and the derivative of negative cosine becomes positive sine. And the derivative of the bottom is one plus two x. Now I substitute in sine of zero over one plus two times zero is zero over one. So notice the difference between the last one where this is not defined. And so we ended up using our graph to, to make our final decision, but this is equal to zero. If you have zero dollars divided by one person, they still get zero dollars. You're allowed to have zero divided by a number just not a number divided by zero. So this next example leads us to introduce a stronger form of L'Hopital's rule, which just says that you can continue to use L'Hopital's rule as long as you get an indeterminate form. If you get two over zero or zero over one or zero over any number, you cannot keep using L'Hopital's rule. But if you continue to get zero over zero or infinity over infinity, you can just keep right on taking the derivative. So let's do number five together. The first step is always to substitute in one plus zero minus one minus zero over two over zero squared is one minus one minus zero over zero or zero over zero. So because we got an indeterminate form, L'Hopital's rule applies. Therefore, we can do the limit as x approaches zero of the derivative of the numerator, one half one plus x to the negative one half. The derivative of negative one is zero and people really struggle with this. So I'm gonna rewrite this as negative one half x instead of x over two. Really want you to be able to go between those two forms easily. And most people then will get the derivative correct, which is minus one half all over two x. Now I substitute in my zero. I get one half 
1 plus 0 to the negative 1 half minus 1 half. So this algebra is pretty tricky for people, 2 times 0. But 1 to the any power, 1 to the hundredth, 1 to the millionth, 1 to the negative 1 half is always just going to be 1. So in the numerator, I do get 0 over 0. So again, I can use L'Hopital's rule. So now I'm going to take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom separately. I get negative 1 fourth x plus 1. I don't know why I reversed it, but it's the same thing. 1 plus x to the negative 3 halves. Now this negative 1 half goes away. Its derivative is 0 all over 2. And as you can see already, there will be no chance of doing L'Hopital's rule again because the denominator will not be equal to 0. So again, keep that in mind about that 0 plus 1. 1 to the anything, no matter how complicated that got, is still just going to be 1. Of course, some people still make a mistake right at this last moment. Don't forget that if you have a fraction divided by a number, it's much easier to have a fraction divided by a fraction. That way you can keep, change, flip, or just flip and multiply. And the answer is negative 1 eighth. On the next one, we go to put in our pi halves. So if you can't remember what secant of pi halves is and you're in honors, you should add it to your chart. If you're in AP, you can do 1 over cosine of pi halves, which is 1 over 0, which means that secant of pi halves is undefined. So think about it graphically. Cosine goes like this. So at pi halves, um, cosine is 0, but secant at that moment is going up to infinity. See that? Remember how secant is the flip of cosine? So secant of pi halves is going up to infinity. And tangent of pi halves, again, if you have forgotten what the graph looks like, I personally think it's easier to memorize the graph than it is the actual, just a bunch of numbers. So as tangent goes to pi halves, it's also going up to infinity, which plus one is still pretty much infinity. So this is the first time we've gotten this instead of zero over zero, but this is still an indeterminate form. You can't sit there and say it's infinity. It's infinity divided by infinity. So it's infinity divided by infinity. Therefore, L'Hopital's rule applies. So I'm going to do the limit as x goes to pi halves. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. And the derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. I can reduce that just a little bit, this and this. So now I just have tangent over secant. When I plug in pi halves, tangent of pi halves, we've already said, is infinity. And secant of pi halves is infinity. So I got another indeterminate form. But remember, L'Hopital's rule says that if you have a um, infinity over infinity or zero over zero more than once, you can just keep right on using L'Hopital's rule. So therefore, use L'Hopital's rule again. So the limit as x goes to pi halves. So remember, we, we simplified this to just tangent over secant. You don't want to use um, the complicated one to do the derivative, because otherwise we would have needed product rule. But it's just tangent on the top. So the derivative of tangent is secant squared. And the derivative of secant is secant tangent. This problem is so much more fun to do in class, because Possibly I like to torture kids, let them <laughs> think about how, uh, how they're going to figure this one out. Do you see it yet? This is literally going to go in circles. You had secant over tangent, then you had tangent over secant. Now you have secant over tangent again, which is still going to be infinity over infinity. This, this is never going to get fixed. This is going to keep running in circles. So do we have any other backup plans? So we tried substituting in. 
We tried L'Hopital's rule. What about simplifying it algebraically? Can you change its form? Absolutely, you can. So you can make this the limit as x goes to pi halves of 1 over cosine of x. And then 1 plus tangent can be sine of x over cosine of x. I can multiply the top and the bottom by cosine of x to clear my complex fraction. Make sure you rewrite the limit. It is still a limit. We have not actually done, plugged anything in yet. And I get 1 over distribute the cosine, cosine of x, plus distribute the cosine, sine of x. Now when I plug in pi halves, I get cosine of pi halves plus sine of pi halves is equal to 1 over 0 plus 1. So it does have an answer, a very nice answer. Okay. Um, now, not everybody is going to, A, think about changing the trig, despite the fact that we spent like two or three weeks on this last year trying to change the form from secants and tangents to all sines and cosines. Not everybody was good at that or enjoys that, but you do have access to a graphing calculator, always in honors, and certainly a lot of the time in AP, they want to know if you if you understand the method of graphing and looking at the table. So we're going to stop again and do that. Unfortunately, your calculator does not have a secant button. So first, let me make my fraction. Uh, you will have to do this as 1 over cosine of x. There is no secant button. And then on the bottom, we have 1 plus tangent of x. So I hit graph. When I look at it. And it, it definitely looks like it's 1. But you know that because we just did it algebraically. The question is, could you be confident enough of that? So here's how we're going to look at the table. Do second table. And at pi halves, ooh, pi halves isn't in there. So we do have the ability to go to value. You might be thinking, oh, I'll just type in pi halves and see what it says. You should already know the answer. What's it going to say? It, it can't say it. So even though it looks like it has a value, you can't see it. But pi halves is 1.57 approximately. So we want to look at the table close to 1.57. So I'm going to teach you something that we haven't done before, which is changing the table set. So I'm going to start my table at 1.57. But more importantly, I'm going to make the increments, the deltas, the changes in each step on the table point, watch this, 0, 0, 1, super small. That means it's going to look really close to it on either side. Now I'm going to go to my table. So as you can see, at pi halves, it has an error. That there is no actual value there. But just to the left of it, just a thousandth away, it's clearly getting closer to one. And then on the right side, it's clearly also getting closer to one. As I'm coming in from the right, it's going down. It's 1.5 thousandths, one and four thousandths, one and three thousandths, two thousandths, one thousandths. You can tell that it's going to one. This is how you would use your table to guarantee an answer at a place where the limit does not exist, or the limit exists. But the, the function does not have a value at that point, but it does have a limit. Number seven, our first step is with all limits is always to plug something in. So tangent of pi halves over one plus tangent of pi halves is equal to infinity over one plus infinity, which is pretty much infinity. So L'Hopital's rule applies. So I'm going to do the limit as x goes to pi halves. The derivative of tangent is secant squared x. The derivative of 1 is 0, and the derivative of tangent is secant squared x. If I simplify that, I get 1. And this confuses people. But try to remember what's happening. 
this is a function, y is equal to, and if you graphed it, you could look at it, it does not look like that, it would, and look at pi halves and see what it looks like it's going to. This is also a function, y is equal to this, and so is this. So now I'm trying to find the limit as x approaches pi halves of the equation y is equal to 1. So what is the limit as you approach pi halves from either direction? It's 1. So sometimes people just get confused when it, all the x's go away. They don't know what's happened. But it's just a constant line, which makes the limit very easy. So the answer is 1. Number 8. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you the answers to the last three in case you'd like to try these on your own. Three, three halves, and the answer to number 10 is zero. And if you get those three right, you don't have to watch the rest of this video. But I will, of course, do them out for you. Um, so if you go to plug this in, sorry, don't need to write the limit. Then I get sine of 3 times 0 over 0, which is sine of 0. Remember, that happens first, over 0, which is 0 over 0. Therefore, L'Hopital's rule applies. However, I do want to point out that we did this exact same problem back in September when we were studying limits. We changed it. We put a 3 on the top and a 3 on the bottom. And then this had the right form that the limit as u approaches 0 of sine of u over u, as long as these two things match, if u is approaching 0, then the answer was going to be 1. This is the general graph for that. So since this is equal to 1 times 3, the answer should come out to be 3. But some people struggled with that. They didn't really understand the whole sign of u over u, and they didn't like the graph. So those people are just going to love L'Hopital's rule. So L'Hopital's rule says that I can now do the limit as theta goes to 0 of the derivative of the numerator is cosine of 3 theta. Unless, of course, you forget the derivative of the inside, and you're going to get it wrong anyway. And the derivative of theta, remember, we're doing it without this algebra there. Uh, the derivative of theta is just 1. Now I plug in a 0. So this is, I'm going to move the 3 to the front so you don't accidentally multiply it. 3 times cosine of 3 times 0 over 1, which is 3 times cosine of 0 over 1. Cosine of 0, if you're in honors, I hope you have your chart. If you're in AP, you need to have these things memorized. All right, on the next one. So our first step is always to just plug it in. 2 cubed is 8. So the top's looking good for my 0 over 0. On the bottom, 2 cubed minus 4 times 2 is also 8 over 8, which is also 0. So you can use L'Hopital's rule. Limit as x approaches 2. Now it's going to be 3x squared, the 8 is gone, over 3x squared minus 4. So I plug in my 2, and 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12. 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 minus 4. 12 over 8, which is 3 halves, not 3 eighths. 3 halves which is the answer. Were you able to do this one before? Yes. So now L'Hopital's rule is giving you choices. Or we would have, when we tried to plug in and got a zero in the denominator, we would have tried simplifying it. So this exact problem that I did give you, this is the difference of two cubes, which is x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4 all over, if I take out the x, I get x squared minus 4. So x times x plus 2, x minus 2. These cancel. And then now I can plug my 2 in. 
4 plus 4 plus 4 is 12. 2 times 4 is 8, which is 3 halves. Okay. But is L'Hopital's rule awesome? Yeah, especially for people that don't remember this difference of two cubes formula. But the point is you're starting to get a lot more choices. Last one. The limit as x goes to infinity. So the first thing that I do is I try to substitute in. All right, right away. Infinity squared, really? So this is definitely going to be infinity on the top. Sorry, i got to fix that. That 7 is terrible. 7. And infinity cubed plus 5 times infinity minus the 4 doesn't really make anything different. It's going to be infinity over infinity. So I can use L'Hopital's rule. That gives me 6x minus 2 over 3x squared plus 5. But when I plug infinity in, I still get infinity over infinity. So I can keep using L'Hopital's rule. So now I do the limit as x approaches infinity and 6 over 6x. So now I get um, 6 over infinity. What is that? Well, if you have $6 divided by an infinite number of people, then this would produce 0. OK, now listen carefully. You could have done this problem a whole minute faster if you had just looked at it and said, oh, we learned a bunch of rules going to infinity. As x approaches infinity, you can just look at the, remember this rule is only for going to infinity, you can look at the powers. And if the power on top is smaller than the power on the bottom, the answer is always going to be zero. So even though we are learning L'Hopital's rule, you still should try substitution. You still should simplify problems algebraically. Sometimes that's going to be a better choice. It was definitely a better choice for this secant tangent one, right? Um, and use your shortcuts. Don't forget about if it's going to infinity, you've got that awesome shortcut. There are special limits, like sine of x over x. If you know what that is as you're going to zero, it's just one, you can just use that. If it's an indeterminate form, now this is considered one of your shortcuts. L'Hopital's rules in your little bag of tricks for shortcuts. And of course, don't forget, there's no excuse for getting a limit wrong ever because you always can make the graph and use the table if necessary. All right, that is it for L'Hopital's rule. I hope you have a great day.